Hey, what's up everyone? And guess what? It is the final episode of the West Show Y series. I'm sad, I'm heartbroken. But I pray that you have been blessed tremendously by the conversations, by um, the inspiration, by everything that we have done over these last few weeks. Man, today's guest um, is very special. You know, he is very special to me. Today's guest is my pastor, my own pastor, uh, Pastor Craig S. Pickett Sr. Um, now, today's episode is very, is very different. Um, I love Pastor Pickett, God, mainly because he is my uncle um, by marriage. My wife, that is her uncle. Um, and, you know, the Pickett family, when I married into the family, they just embraced me with open arms and took me in. Um, and ironically enough, a couple years ago, um, I had a job offer in Charlotte. Um, and the job required me to come down for job training for about three months. Um, and this was actually the first time, this was about maybe three, four, five years ago. It was the first time I actually had an opportunity to just sit down and meet and talk to them, uh, to Pastor Pickett and his wife, uh, Lady Patricia Pickett. And they opened their doors and they said, hey, you can stay with us um, for the entire three months that you're here. You can stay with us and you can love on us and whatever. And that three month time, time span or that, that three months that I stayed with them was so impactful, uh, mainly because of the fact that they opened up their house and they just loved on me like I was their own child, like I was their own son. Um, they gave me an opportunity to um, to speak at their church. They, they opened the door to allow me to pray. We have Tuesday night prayer. Um, you know, he would give me the microphone and I would be nervous. Be like, I don't want to pray. I don't want to be in the way. <laughs> I don't know how to pray. But, you know, everything that they've done, they have helped nurture, mold, and shape me into the preacher that I am today. Uh, and that is no slack or no slight given to um, my previous church. Um, you know, I thank God for where I came from, where I am today. But when we moved down to Charlotte, you know, we were, me and my wife, we were in, you know, a limbo of effect a little bit. Uh, we were trying to figure out where we wanted to go. Um, and while we were in the service, and I'll just go ahead and tell you straight up, we were at Elevation Church. And we were this close to just joining. Um, and I remember Pastor Furtick saying, he was talking about obedience. He was saying, if you are in this building, and ironically enough, God had already spoke to me before that he had actually said this. God had told me that breakthrough is where we needed to be. It's like, if you're in this building and you're not being obedient to what God has told you to do, if you're supposed to be at another place, get up and leave and go there. And when he said that, I said, thank you, God. That was my key or my cue to go to breakthrough. Um, and ever since then, we've been at Breakthrough Ministries Church of God in Christ ever since then. You know, this church has blessed me tremendously. This church has opened me or received me and my family with open arms. And I cannot express my gratitude, my love, and my support for Breakthrough Ministries Church of God in Christ. Um, gosh, man, I, you know, a lot of situations, a lot of things that I've been through. You know, Pastor Pickett was there to help me, to help guide me, uh, mainly because that, as you see in his episode, he talks about what his why is, but it's part of his purpose. It's part of who he is. And I thank God for having that because my long time prayer, longest prayer that I've ever wanted, uh, that I've always said was, God, I wanted to be under a leader, under a pastor who would take me under his wings and just show me what it means to be a pastor. Show me what it means to be a preacher. Because I don't know where God is gonna take me. I don't know where he would have me, but I know that if he would give me this opportunity uh, to pastor one day, that I want to be able to learn and glean from a true pastor, a true man of God, who will take me under his wings and show me everything. And to God be the glory, you know, I have that in Pastor Pickett, you know, 
I am his nephew. He thinks that him and his wife, I, for some reason, they think that I'm their nephew and they just forget that Misha is their actual niece. <laughs> but, you know, I thank God for that because, you know, one of the things I prayed for in marriage, this is a marriage nugget for fellas out there that's listening. This is a nugget for you. One of the things I prayed for in marriage was that I had um, my wife came from a great family, a family that knows God, mainly because of the fact that I wanted to make sure that I had great in-laws. I wanted a family that would receive me. Um, and graciously enough, man, the Pickets, the Bullocks, they have received me with open arms. And I thank God for that because not everybody has that testimony. Not everybody can say that they love their in-laws and they love their in-laws family like that. But, you know, God has blessed me tremendously um, with this great family. Um, and I am forever indebted to um, their love and support and everything that they have done and given me over the years. When my mom passed, they were one of the first ones there. They were one of the ones that were uh, always there by our side, helping us and supporting us along the way. So without further ado, because this is already six minutes long, and I want you guys to enjoy the conversation. But I want you guys to, to get the backdrop because I want you guys to see just how much I love Pastor Pickett and I love his ministry, love what he's doing. Um, at Breakthrough Ministry Church of God of Christ. And I pray that you guys are blessed by his story. So please be blessed and receive the conversation between me and Pastor Pickett here on One Faith Radio. Well, first of all, let me just say thank you uh, for having me on and uh, taking the time to uh, uh, just to hear from an old man like me. <laughs> uh, but I, I, as you were speaking before I get started, I was thinking of what a great platform and i'm sort of a statistic type guy i like statistics and i just sort of thought man what well, this would have been interesting just to kind of see what pastors from different states and different areas and how did it, how did that uh see if it pastors are almost i suspect many are going through some of the same things and mm -hmm. uh some of the thoughts are similar to uh, one another whether you're in ohio or florida Wherever you may be at, you still pastoring people and that you still seek God for instruction and guidance. So having said that, you know, I just thank God for the wonderful work you're doing to take the time to uh, speak to uh, pastors and, and leaders and spiritual leaders. And I think it's a great thing that to kind of uh, have individuals who kind of share and preferably that uh, individuals will hear the words of the leaders and in the heart of their leaders are and individuals who are being led by the Lord and find reasons and uh, motivation to keep living, keep living for the Lord, keep working hard uh, for God and keep uh, seeking him and striving to be the person he called each of us to be. So having said that, um, I'm Pastor Pickett, uh, Pastor of Breakthrough Ministries, a Church of God in Christ located in Concord, North Carolina. I've been pastoring now for <clears throat> almost 12 years. Um, just a little bit about our church. Uh, we founded a church. Uh, it was one that uh, we believe that the Lord, it was after much fasting and praying, and we'll talk more about this in the, as we go along, but uh, much praying, fasting and praying and seeking God on not just uh, pastoring, but where to go the name of the church, uh, what he wanted me to do, the assignment. I probably would be one of the most unusual individuals that you interview. Uh, whenever we begin to talk, you you find out some of the things of my, uh, my walk, my, uh, my initial uh, start was probably an unusual start, but I thank God that, uh, that he put it in my heart and I just felt that God was leading me. So, uh, I'm grateful that God has given me the opportunity. I've been blessed, a beautiful wife, three sons, uh, three beautiful daughter in, -law, uh, daughter in love. My wife call them daughter in, in love versus daughter in law. And we're grateful for, uh, for the add on that God has added to our family. I'm grateful for just when we thought we was empty nesters, uh, the last son moved out of the house and Elder Pickett at the time was a uh, young man in college. We like, yay, we empty nesters only to find out. Uh, the Lord said, now it's time to pass it. And we're starting all over again with an extended family. And uh, thank God for the ones that he has sent. Thank God for you and your lovely wife that the Lord has also sent 
to our ministry to help out. And uh, we're so grateful for the extended family from uh, a lady, uh, Misha, uh, just an awesome young lady, awesome prayer warrior. The first time I heard her pray, I was like, oh my God, I didn't know this young lady had all this in her. Uh, but, <laughs> yep. uh, but thank God for she awesome. Uh, I know God has got great works with you uh, and her, uh, even as we uh, continue on this journey. But uh, just a little bit, that's who I am. And yeah, thank definitely. And we're we're appreciative of being a part of your ministry and being under you and um, just serving you and, and helping you um, in every capacity that we can. Um, you know, we we come from a good background, a good strong uh, foundation, especially the church that we came out of. You know, we learned a lot and um, excited about bringing all of our knowledge that we've learned at of our previous church to your church and and learning even more and even and growing even more. Um, in ministry or, or, or in a, in life period, you know, one of the mm -hmm. things that when we moved down here, you know, I was very excited about moving down here because I knew that we would have the opportunity to come to your church. Um, and I love your church. I, I love the fact that, you know, your heart for ministry, your heart for your congregation, your heart for the people. And I, and I knew that I could learn a lot from um, sitting under a leader like you. So yeah, I love it. I love being part of Breakthrough Ministries, Church of God and Christ, um, Church of God and Christ family. <laughs> I try to fit family and Christ together. <laughs> but yeah, I love being a part of uh, the family, man. I really do. I really do. So let's jump right into the questions. Um, okay. Um, yeah, we're just going to go right to question one. Uh, what is your why? And a little bit of a backstory to that uh, question is, um, when I was talking to uh, one of the um, young ladies in the Christian Podcasters Association, um, it's a group that I'm a part of, um, she kept asking me this question, you know, what's your why? Um, of course, I know what my why is for ministry and for life and for one faith. But, you know, as she was asking me that consistently, uh, it just kind of that, that that thought just kind of kept ringing in my ear. And I felt that the Lord was telling me that, hey, we need to do a, or you should do a series just talking about what's your why, you know, mm -hmm. helping people find their why or discover their mm -hmm. purpose. Uh, Cause it's so needed in a time like this because we're in this very unusual season. Um, but I feel like God is preparing us for something greater that's coming in the next season. Um, and we need to do everything that we can to make sure that we are in tune and lockstep with what God's, will is for us, but at the same time, um, understanding our full potential, our full why. Um, so that is the, the story to where the series came from, where it was birthed mm -hmm. from. So I'll just turn it over because I can ramble and, and I'm pretty sure Misha see this later. She can be like, why you don't let them talk? <laughs> <laughs> You're talking too much. <laughs> so uh, yeah, pass the picket. What is your why? <clears throat> what is my why? <clears throat> my why is to answer the call. Mm the call that God, I believe, have put on my life is the assignment that God has given me. Uh, my mission that he's given me is to help others. <laughs> my mission is to help others, to, uh, uh, to empower others, to teach others the word of God, to encourage others, to use my uh, trials, my testimony, uh, the things that the Lord has brought me through, uh, to be relatable that individuals can uh, grow from, and individuals can uh, be encouraged and build and remind individuals of who they are. Sometimes we as people, <clears throat> I don't feel like because of may not have the uh, education level that somehow, may not have the money that individuals have, and we feel like we're less equipped. And I would tell you that's going to be part of my story as we talk. Uh, but I believe God allowed me to, uh, from my background, <clears throat> uh, from military to uh, transitioning to federal government, working in federal government to uh, also into ministry, is, in, is to help individuals to know who they are, to help individuals to know the God of the Bible, uh, to encourage, and like I say, to encourage individuals that know that where you are, you don't have to stay. And there's a God who will help you in every facet of the way. So my biggest why is to answer the call, is to push every individual, to build every individual 
I believe that God cross, calls to cross my path uh, to help them to be who God predestined them to be. I love that because I remember um, uh, it was about a couple of years ago back when I had first started in ministry and we had a conversation. Um, I think that was like the first time that we had actually sat down and really talked to each other. And I was telling you about how I was struggling with, with paying tithes and, and everything like that. And, and you yeah. basically just told me, hey, you need to pay your tithe or you could be, you know, cursing your family. Yeah. I was like, wow. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, I learned a lot from that conversation because it, it, it gave me a great idea of who you were. You know, you're a true man of God, someone who, who who's going to tell you the truth, tell you um, the truth to help you. Um, do the right thing for 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 your per for for a, a greater purpose, um, and I think that you know that stuck with me a lot from that day till now because you know hearing your why to to help people and to serve people um, to answer the call, you know that conversation helped me to answer the call for being uh, faithful and um, not just paying my tithes but just being a faithful Christian, being a faithful person. Um, being faithful in um, in 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 answering the call to, to what God has called me to do, um, I truly believe that you know one faith is one of the um, few subsets that God has called me, or one of the platforms that God has called and and blessed me to have. And I, I'm praying that you know He continues to bless it and continues to to mature it and grow it. But you mm -hmm. know, a lot of that came from being under you and 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 you allowing me to serve and allowing me to do this. So I I thank you for that. So uh, the next question is, what is your testimony for salvation? My testimony of salvation is, uh, like my, I grew up in a family where uh, both my mother and my father, uh, we grew up Baptist, and uh, we had prayer service in my father's home. Every Tuesday night, every Thursday night, uh, every uh, Sunday morning, uh, we had prayer service. And even when my father wasn't there, my mother was not going to allow us to go to bed. We might be watching television and fall asleep, but she was not going to have allowed us to go to bed. Hang on a second. I thought I turned this thing down. She was not going to allow us to go to bed without um, having prayer service. And that really include it mean uh, it means every night that we would uh, have some scripture to read, uh, someone would pray, someone would, uh, and my mother would exalt some a few words if my father wasn't there. Um, and when my father was there, of course, it was on Sunday morning. Uh, so I grew up uh, in having a somewhat of an understanding of God and. A lease of the Bible to know to do the right thing didn't mean that I always did it, but I I knew by my parents putting it in us uh, that uh, it was a it was uh, something that I should do. It wouldn't be until I got to college. Uh, when I got in college, I became more um, I got saved, um, and that to me was almost the probably the place where a lot of times people don't get say but uh, I did because I, I ended up going to church uh, it was a upper room church of God in Christ at the time it, the pastor was uh, superintendent Turner and I went with my girlfriend believe it or not called myself being cool went to the uh, church and we got there and all of a sudden the Lord began to speak and uh, during the message and whenever he had finished preaching. He asked those who wanted to come up for prayer uh, and wanted to be saved. And we both sort of looked at one another and went up there together. Although we rolled together the church, we went up there together. And in my mind, so many things are, 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 are registering in my mind that this is not the time to get saved. You get saved now. When you go back to your college, I was in college, so... My thought was when I go back to my dorm, I can't hang out with my friends. We're not going to be doing this. We're not going to be doing this. Oh, my God. Everything that anyone put in my mind, you're going to have a boring life your last year and a half here in school. Right. It's right. going to be terrible. Uh, but at the time, like I say, it was uh, I gave my life to Christ and and everything just sort of from there. 
uh, and I began to grow in the Lord. And it wouldn't be until after I left college that I really began to grow. I got saved, um, but I didn't get filled with the Holy Ghost down the road later. Uh, but it was enough to keep me until I graduated from college, went into the military, and then I joined another church. And that's when I really began to grow in the Lord. Sorry, I was on mute. But yeah, that that your um your story is so similar to a lot of people. You know, I I got saved when I was eight, but I you know when you're a kid, you know when you're getting saved at eight, it's it's a different it's a different thing um, than when you are older and you understand why you're saved and you live in that lifestyle. Because for me, you know, when I went off to college, it was it was different. Um, I, I was saved, but I was more of being a hypocrite, <laughs> but, but, you know, I had to, uh, I was blessed and able to, you know, still be in ministry. I was someone yeah. always around in ministry, which was weird. Cause like, I was the biggest hypocrite, but somehow, you know, God had me, you know, involved in ministry in many aspects. You know, I was involved in campus ministry. Um, I was involved in the gospel choir at our, at, um, at my mm-hmm. school. And you know, God allowed me to stay in the in the in the in the sauce, I would say, mm-hmm. of ministry and being with Him. And I I can you know totally understand how you felt, you know, when you get saved and or when you are saved and you contemplating like, man, I'm I can't have any fun. I can't do this. I can't do that because of so many things that's going on in your mind. Um, mm-hmm. But you know, I think that that's what a lot of people think. You know, when they get saved, especially new converts, it's like, well, I'm not ready to give up X, Y, and Z yet. Yeah. But the truth of the matter is, like, you know, God, he wants you to give that stuff up, but he would much rather you come to him with that stuff in your hand, um, as dirty and messed up as you are, so that he can help you to get rid of that stuff. And I feel like if we, if people were to grasp that and understand that, you know, God wants them just as they are, and mm-hmm. as they continue to grow, they will shed this mm-hmm. stuff, they'll continue to grow. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I feel that more people would be more inclined to um, to achieve or want salvation. But the fact of the matter is, you know, I think they see too many examples of, of people being, you know, super uh, holier than thou or perfect. And they assume that, oh, well, I must I have to be perfect in order to be a Christian when that's not true. You know, we're we make mistakes still. And I'm so glad the Lord doesn't look at us like that because he knows that we are all human. We know that we're not perfect. He knows that uh, we're going to still make mistakes. Uh, but I think one of the things that the enemy always plays on our mind is exactly what you're saying is that uh, I don't want to be part of this. I'm not ready. A lot would say I'm not ready right now mm-hmm. because there's so many other things. And the truth be told, you know, um, we don't know just how much you're missing out uh, whenever we don't we don't submit to the Lord because a lot of things we're trying to do on our own and not realizing that if we submit to God, God will just bring things and turn things around a whole lot better for us than right. what we can plan and what we can do. But it's that that enemy that keeps us in that vein that man, this is what I'm accustomed to. You know, I'm used to on weekends of going out and partying. I'm wishing on week. I'm used to doing these things, and I'm gonna miss out. And it makes you think that you're gonna miss out, not looking at how much more you're gonna gain mm. by turning to God. How much more He's getting ready to do in your life. Uh, one of the things I think that with that attitude, and although I got saved in college here, uh, I wasn't one that who was heavy party or nothing like that. But I did have two other good friends that we uh we normally go play tennis together play basketball together we ran track together we all threw us got an rotc and would none of neither one of us good at any of those events but we all just did it and we just kind of you know we 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 uh, two of us had the same major but it although i got saved they didn't treat me any different i told them i went to church and i told them i gave my life to christ and we were still friends. We didn't drink then. We still didn't drink. We still went and played tennis. We still played ball, ball together. Uh, they were cursed and said, oh, excuse me, Craig, or something like that. Uh, and they get kind of gave, they gave respect. And but they would still call me a name, like uh some name or something, you know, like egghead or something like that. But we was good friends, uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, and the Lord bless us that we're still good friends today, uh, uh the three of us. And 
Uh, one just came to my house a, a couple of months, about two months ago, even during this uh, season, lives up in Greensboro. Um, we share about even our growth going up, but the enemy will definitely want us to think that you know, we're missing out and don't give your life to Christ. And God says, there's so much more. One thing we don't know when I, we're going to take our last breath. We don't know we're going to be in a car accident. We don't know we're going to live uh, another week, but the Lord uh, spares our life. And so I'm grateful and I thank God for the God that we serve that yet loves us enough. Exactly. Uh, even when we come short, he still cares for us. Exactly. Um, it, well, your point made me think about, um, I had a conversation with another pastor earlier, um, and he said that, you know, as he was talking about his testimony, he was like, my testimony is boring, you know, I don't have a, a cool <laughs> testimony or anything like that. But, you know, he was speaking to someone else, and they told him, it was like, man, you don't know what God has kept you from and yeah. what God has protected you from. And yeah. that's another way to look at it for a lot of people like yeah. me and, and like other people, you know, we may have t born testimony, you know, we grew up in church. We just wanted to rebel or, you know, we just wanted yeah. to do our own thing, but you know, we don't have those strong captivating testimonies, but mm -hmm. you know, it just made me think, you know, Hey, we don't know what God may have protected us from, kept us from, sure. um, because there's sure. so much stuff out there in the world that we could have been in, involved in. I know me personally, I, there's so much stuff that I could have been involved in. Um, especially where I'm from, but I thank God that, mm -hmm. you know, Hey, he had a special call in my life and had purpose, um, in my heart to do a lot of different things differently. I've always been a child that never really, you know, went with the flow of what everyone else was doing. If, if people were going mm -hmm. left, I'm going right. I, for some reason, mm -hmm. I just don't know, <laughs> but I was just always <laughs> like that. You know, I always did my own thing. And I, it's probably why my daughter is kind of the way that she is. Cause Tegan, she just, she does her own little thing by herself. I just <laughs> exactly. I think I think I rubbed off on her a little bit. So, <laughs> so um, next question is: When you were called to ministry, did you answer right away? And then the follow up question to that is: uh, If your answer is no, um, then why did you ignore the call? And what prompted you, or what prompted you to eventually um, acquiesce or answer the call? Well, my answer to it is no. So that means I got to <laughs> add on to this. <laughs> right. So, um, uh, I didn't answer the call right away. Um, I spent probably two years, if not three, uh, running, uh, afraid uh, to uh, answer the call. Uh, one was that um, probably about like most folks when you get saved, I just thought I was ill-equipped. I didn't think I knew enough of the Bible. I didn't, I um, was not one who went to uh, Bible training. I was went to regular college. I, I did not major in theology. Uh, it was one of those, so when the Lord called me, for me, it was more of, is this the Lord or is this people saying this? Is this the Lord or is this what Craig want? Is this the Lord or this is my wife trying to push me? Right. You know, uh, I went to a church. We went to a church one time. Uh, we were out of town, and I can't remember the exact particular state we were in. Um, being in the military, we traveled a lot. And uh, my wife and I, we were sitting there with our three sons, and and we just sat just like anyone else. And by the end of service, the um, MC stood up and said, we would like for the young preacher to have some words. Uh, we asked him, you know, the guest preacher if he wanted to have some words. Mm. And she was looking, pointing towards me. And I'm saying to myself, I'm not a preacher. You <laughs> listen, I'm not a preacher. And my wife would nudge me, Craig, you get up. You know she's talking to you. I ain't no preacher. You know the lady talking to you. You need to get up. I'm not a preacher, Pat. <laughs> uh, but finally, I did get up, you know, oh. and, and made some comments um, and, and, you know, introduced my family and stuff. Uh, I was one that did not want to step out if I wasn't absolutely sure. And that was where I was. I was not, as a young, uh, I was a deacon at the time. And I just didn't think that I was, um, my life had too many holes in it, mm. too messed up, too much. Although I wasn't a big party, drinking or smoking, but I just didn't feel like I was one that the Lord would use uh, to be, uh, to minister. Uh, so for me, I was comfortable with 
mopping the floor, cleaning church, cutting grass, anything but preaching. Yeah. I didn't mind sometimes help teach, but becoming a minister or preach, I just thought that's just not me. So I spent a lot of time. Why didn't I? I spent um, uh, during that two years as I began to, okay, God, if this you's calling me, I need to pray really fast and pray. And I remember as I started to really take it serious, about a year prior to me uh, accepting my call, I went on a 21 day fast and, oh. and I was really fasting and seeking God. God, I don't know, I can't handle this. I'm not ready, I don't know if I'm, I can walk in what you call I've My life has never been one that's perfect or someone that someone would say that's maybe the church or a preacher. I just looked at preachers as being one who are that's living perhaps that more of a perfect type light yeah. and that wasn't me yeah. and so i spent 21 days fasting uh then i spent another one our church went on a 10-day fast i was just seeking god god if you would call me if you call me i need confirmation yeah. i needed something to help me and you know the interesting thing is for almost three years uh, during this time i believe the lord was calling me I had these dreams, hmm. and it would be uh, almost three to four times a week, the same dream for almost three years. It was always I'll be in chase, and I'll be, it was the dream I'll be in chase by bears, wow. and they would never get me, but I was always being chased, and I would wake up at night, I woo, and I wake up, and I wake my wife up. I like, ooh, boy, they do being chased. What you doing being chased by bears again? I had a bear. They almost got me, Pat, but they did not get me. Wow. Um, I was always, I guess, just running and running, uh, but they never got me. They never, uh, uh, they never caught up with me. I think that that. Uh, so when I really, after I fasted for uh, the last time was ten days, fast. Uh, I transitioned out of the military. And I was believing God, okay, God, this is what you're telling me to do. And I'm afraid, I'm scared. Uh, I'm going to be honest, God, I'm, a, I'm afraid. I just don't see myself as a minister. And I called my pastor at the time, uh, Superintendent, uh, 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 Superintendent Murphy, now Bishop Murphy. Mm -hmm. um, and he was working at Wachovia as a vice president, one of the VPs at Wachovia at Wachovia and I called him uh, being a deacon in the church and I've been fasting I went on a 10 day then I was doing a three day and I called him at the end of my three day just to say I want to set up a meeting so that I could talk to him about I'm believing God calling me to, to become a minister and I don't know how to accept this and I'm not sure and when I called him you know him being working at the bank uh, he said, okay, fine. It's about 10 o'clock, 10, 30, 11 o'clock. He said, fine. Come on, we'll meet at 12 o'clock for lunch. <laughs> oh, my God. I got scared all over again. This is too fast. Yeah. I need about two weeks to let this just digest and I'm accepting call. He's talking about let's meet right now. Yeah. Um, and so the interesting thing uh, is that he said let's meet at this restaurant. And I got over there around, I think around 12 o'clock or 1 o'clock, maybe 12, whatever the time he said. Mm -hmm. Got there a few minutes early, and I was sitting there in my car and waiting for him before I went inside the restaurant, and he did not show up right then. Mm -hmm. And I started praying, okay, Lord, maybe you didn't call me to preach. Maybe you didn't call me this. Maybe I missed it. Even at the fast, maybe I, this is not what you want me to do since he's not here. If you wanted me to be here, and I'm telling all these things are playing in my mind. If God, if you wanted me then, then he would have been here. So I start my car up uh, and I began to drive away and I began to drive down the road and I'm talking to myself. The Holy Ghost just came to me and said, uh, I called you whether he shows up or not. Mm. I still call you. Mm. I drove probably about a, three or four blocks and I turned around and I went back to the park and where I was parked at. And I just sit there and I started praying. I need your help, Lord. If this is what you want me to do, I want to be serious. I don't want to take it for a joke. I don't want to do it for fame, fortune. I just want to do it because this is what you calling me to do. And I sat there and I prayed with you for probably about 
three minutes and four minutes. <clears throat> I had my eyes closed, and when I opened my eyes, his car was parked. I was in a parking space, and he was parked right in front of me, like blocking me. <laughs> wow. And I just I opened my eyes. By then, the Lord had already confirmed, if he shows up or not, I still call you. Yeah. And I was good to go then, but uh, it took a lot because I guess maybe my, my insecurity that I'm not qualified. I, it's not something. More than I'm not qualified, I don't want to mess this up. Yeah. I see this as a high calling. I don't want to get out here and and not take it to the level that God wants me to be at. And God, I would want God to be pleased, but not to get out here and, and do something that I've seen and heard of preachers. Lord, I just didn't I didn't want to for you to get on my case. Maybe that might be what it was. I was a little afraid that the Lord might get on my case too. So, right. uh, but I wanted to be serious about it. If you call me God, I don't want to take this as a joke or as a, or just as some as someone trying to get a title or something. Yeah. I want to make sure that uh, I'm walking according to your word and you're pleased with my walk. Yeah, I love that. I mean, it, it resonates because for for me, I can attest to how you feel or how you felt because that was my thing. I knew I was called to preach for many years, ever since I was a kid. Mm -hmm. I knew I was called to preach uh, even up until when I was in college and I just kept running from it. I knew I was called to preach, but it wasn't until I kept having, like you said, that reoccurring dream. Uh, it's funny as you said it. Mm -hmm. I just started thinking about the dream that I had every single night. I had the same dream for like a, a, at least three months straight, and I could not shake it. And uh -huh. I was like, "What is this?" Yeah. And it was just a dream of me preaching, me preaching at my home, uh -huh. and I I could see it clearly and vividly just me preaching every single. I don't know what I was preaching, but I know uh -huh. I was preaching. <laughs> but, I saw, <laughs> but I saw me preaching, and it was just so scary. Yeah. And I was just like, "Man, what is this?" Yeah, I couldn't shake it. And when I yeah. actually started, you know, believing it, like, okay, I'll, I'll go and see what this is about. You know, that's when uh -huh. I, started, I started answering the call then. Um, and it, I, even after that, I did kind of run a little bit more because, you know, I, uh, people tell me all the time, it used to tell me all the time, you are going to be a pastor, you this, you that, you preach it, this, yeah. that. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you, yeah. I don't want to, you know, just jump into it because other people say I'm, I'm supposed to be this. Like, right. I want God to tell me right. Um, and at the time, I just didn't feel that God was telling me that at the moment. I just you mm -hmm. know, I was scared, terrified. I was like, yeah. And if another thing, too, I just didn't want to be like how you're, like you said, you're, the typical pastors are, you know, they're, they they presume to be super holy. And I just like, that's not me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm not that yeah. at all. And that's just how yeah. I felt. And I ran from that yeah. because of that. But at the same yeah. time, um, it wasn't until I went to church one, um, it was a Friday night service. Um it was right before I really just like confirmed and say, okay, God, I'm going through with it. I just remember seeing God standing over the pulpit, um, like holding a sign. I just remember seeing a sign over the pulpit saying, you should be here. This is where you need to mm -hmm. be. Um, and at mm -hmm. that moment I said, you know what, God, I'm just, I'm going to answer the call. I, I scheduled an appointment. Yeah. With the bishop. I talked to Bishop. Yeah. I was terrified about talking to Bishop about it. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I heard horror stories. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, please don't let that be me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He kicked out of his office, but then after we talked and I told him everything, he leaned back in his chair. And he said, "Mate, mate." <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, you called. <laughs> he he did something like like uh, the signal gun. He was like, "I'm at, God is saying I'm adding more bullets to your chamber." And I was like, "Well, praise yeah. God." Yeah, because I was nervous the yeah. whole time. Yeah, so it was just awesome to know that, you know, I, it was confirmed. But at the same time, you know, I felt that God was definitely telling me like, hey, I got you. This is your call and this is what you're supposed to do. Keep going. Sure. So, yeah, I, 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 you I know, the, the interesting thing was that after I accepted my call, and after I accept, OK, Lord, I'm going to do this. God, I just need you to help me with this. And after I accept and after I said yes. It's like the dream just stopped. Yeah. The bear stopped chasing me. All of that just ended. And I think it, I, I probably may have had maybe one or two more a uh, couple months down the road, but it just like went away. Yeah. And for years, almost, I want to say at least almost three years. I mean, I know it was at least two and probably almost three. It was three or four times a week. 
man. I'm being chased and it, it was like I was running, running and running. And uh, they never got me, but I was sure was running. Sometimes <laughs> I, would be, I would be at the church. Sometimes it would be at my father's house. Sometimes I might be in Raleigh. It would just be in just different places that I've been. And as always, I'm out there doing something. All of a sudden, a bear coming and I take off running. Uh, but the Lord never allowed it. Uh, and I never got caught, but it was all one of those things that it was always right. It was interesting what you said because also that's how it was for me whenever I, I finally had the conversation with uh, Bishop Murphy um, as I became a pastor. His, well, that, that experience was a little different, but uh, the ministry piece said was, uh, he said uh, when I was uh, becoming a minister, he said, well, I knew the Lord had already told me I was just waiting on you. Mm. And I just got scared all over again, you know. <laughs> he said, the Lord had already put it in my spirit. And he just, uh, but I was just waiting on you to accept what God had called you to do. Mm. You know, I was a deacon, but uh, but I trusted. But the Lord, uh, he saw enough to, to even as a running scared deacon and still use a brother. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. All. It's, it just shows that, you know, God can use anyone or anything. Yeah. Uh, if he called you, you know, you got to answer the call. So for anyone that's listening, if God calls yeah. you, you know, yeah. you gotta answer the call eventually. Um, I pray that our stories help you yeah. uh, at the same time, you know, you got to answer the call. Uh, that's a whole part of, the, of finding your why, uh, whether you're in ministry or if you're in anything that, you know, that you feel passionate about, you know, if God has purpose that for you in your heart, mm -hmm. uh, and mm -hmm. you're having dreams about it and you can't yeah. shake it, you know, that's yeah. God calling you and telling you that, Hey, you need to do this, whether yeah. you're, you know, if it's a landscaping business or if it's starting your own business and doing something or if it's just being a, 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 an excellent father or mother or whatever, you know, mm -hmm. whatever the case may be, you know, God is calling you and telling you to do just that. So that's wonderful, man. So that kind of leads to the next question. If I yeah. can jump right into the next one. Yeah, go ahead. Because it, it asked about what motivate you to pursue ministry. Was that one was that after I had met with, um, Bishop Murphy, uh, uh, even now that pursue as a pastor, uh, as a pastor, <clears throat> almost the same thing. I took spent uh, several days fasting and seeking God before I stepped out because uh, some I've seen uh, experiences where ministries start and, and ministries uh, end up closing down. Uh, and, I've, and I've seen some folks being very special in ministry uh, and it kind of gave me almost a point where I don't know if I really want part of this. I'm fine just being a deacon. Uh, but when the Lord called me the pastor, uh, that was somewhat unique as well. Uh, one was that I was a minister and I've been serving at a, as a minister probably five or six years, I think. Um, and no, 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 no. I've been I probably 96 to 05, almost almost 2005, almost 10 years, nine years, not quite 10 years as a minister, nine years. And when I met with, uh, as a minister, and I, I, when I met with Bishop Murphy at the time, it was Elder Murphy, uh, to share with him that God had called me to step out pastor. And I was not an elder. Uh, I had not been to the academy, uh, but I believe that the Lord has put on, tugging on my heart it wasn't, I didn't have the run that I had as a minister. I wasn't as afraid as I was as a minister, uh, but I grew more and I learned to trust God more. Uh, and I was working much more in the ministry, teaching, helping with the Sunday school. And so as I taught classes, that helped me in my own growing. Um, as I taught Sunday school, Bible study, children's church, every time I would put a parent, I didn't realize it was also preparing me uh, to grow as well. And even as serving in ministry, it helped me. Uh, and so when I began to tell Bishop Murphy, I was a minister that the Lord called me the pastor. Uh, he just sort of smiled. And, uh, and I was saying to myself, I'm serious, what are you smiling for? Uh, but he, and he just sort of leaned back in his chair and said, well, what is the name of the ministry? And I told him Breakthrough Ministry. And I said, God gave me the name of the ministry. He gave me the city where to go at uh, and told me to go to Concord. Um, and I said, I've been praying about this for a couple few months now. 
And I'm believing this is what God had called me to do. And it's interesting because a person called me when we started and said, hey, we have a building in Charlotte, uh, almost downtown Charlotte. Say you can have that building. Uh, he was a doctor uh, in Charlotte and said, you can start your ministry in one of, in my building here that I don't use no more, but you can start if you want to. Wow. And I, and I said, the Lord didn't tell me that. I wasn't trying to be harsh, but I said, the Lord specifically told me Concord. So I have to stay in Concord. Yeah. Um, and, uh, but it was, uh, it was one of those things that, uh, that I grew more from uh, spending that time with the Lord that I began to, pers to, uh, pursue the call, the answer to call of uh, pastor and then, um, which I believe the Lord has continued to be with us yeah. because of taking a step a little bit braver than I was yeah. uh, first as a, as a minister. But it was interesting just to say after I've been pastoring almost a year, uh, I still hadn't, uh, Bishop Woolard came and said, because I've been pastoring, we've been working, we've been, people have been coming to church and he ordained me as an elder hmm. along with four other pastors. I think it was five of us that night that became ordained elders wow. uh, at that service. That's awesome. That's awesome. So what motivates you to continue in ministry now, uh, especially during this pandemic that we're in? I think the thing that motivates me the most now is, uh, again, it's still my assignment, but the most important thing is when I see uh, individuals grabbing hold to things that's being said, holding on to the things that's being taught, applying those things that's being said, uh, holding on to the word of God. Nothing is more uh, 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 more appreciative than or gratifying to see someone. It's like when the word and when the elevator goes to the top and you really something you're going through and you kept praying and you see God do it. And it gives you now the testimony that just like anybody else in the Bible, God now giving you your own personal testimony that if I did it for Moses, if I did, did it for Abraham, if I did it for Jacob, I do it for you. I do it for your family. I open up the windows of heaven, pull you out of blessing and you won't have a room to see. Folks who are paying tight and now seeing God open up doors for them to get homes, cars, things that they said family growing up that did not have, and now seeing God move on their behalf. And yet how some, the, the, I guess perhaps the most gratifying thing is that when you see individuals who have been going through for a while, now all of a sudden, they, because they kept applying, they kept coming to church, they kept growing, and now they're seeing those seeds being uh, uh, blossoming, mm -hmm. and now they're seeing fruits of their labor, and they're seeing that if they keep doing this, the Lord will do it. And that's, I tell you, one of the things that motivates just is uh, to see individuals standing on the word of God. Yeah. Uh, every time you stand and, and continue to apply that to your family, it reminds me, I must be doing something right that God called me to do. To see individuals grow, for me, I realize it's not about me, but it's about God. And if I can, if I, if I can help someone, um, and then I believe I'm doing the right thing. I'll share with my wife. Uh, more times than one is that um, uh, one of the things is that I believe that uh, as the Lord has blessed us uh, to grow from uh, when I started pastoring and being a at the time before I well before I became a pastor I was working with federal government and to allow me uh, to grow in the federal government to get promoted uh, to GS 13 which is like six figure salary in federal government to oversee uh, five, you know, nine states or five states and part of nine states employees. Uh, and God allowed me to see, even in the military, and I thought, okay, God, there's a reason you allow me to see things that grow. Now I can turn back and help somebody else, help someone else that, who may, uh, who may be going through and trying to get them, trying to remind them, if you keep on, God can use anybody. He can take your situation where it looks like it's, man, it's dire. It doesn't look like it. Now, nothing can ever come out of this. Right. Uh, and maybe you didn't finish college. Maybe you didn't get all this, but it doesn't stop God. That's and that's to help to, to encourage individuals to know that, man, the Lord can do anything if you just put your trust in. If you go out to him, he'll just prove to you that I am Jehovah Jireh. I'm your provider. 
I'm Jehovah Nisi, I'm your banner. If we go out to him, he'll keep on doing exceedingly and abundantly above all you could ask or think because that's, he would never allow you to outdo him. No, he won't. He is so God. He is so God. He's so good. That's, I love that. I love everything that you said. So um, have you ever wanted to quit ministry? If so, why? Interesting question. <laughs> <laughs> well, I would tell you, I probably like any other pastor, there are times when uh, uh, the challenge, um, I don't think I wanted to quit ministry. I sure felt like, well, I don't know if it's quitting. I'm throwing up my hands and saying, Lord, what's going on? I think for the most part, uh, I, there are times when I really felt like, Lord, this is hard. Uh, I used to talk with a good friend of mine, uh, Dean Jeffries. He was a dean at the University of Davis, Davidson College. And he and I used to talk and we used to exchange some of the challenges that we both confronted, uh, him being in, uh, being uh, taken over at church versus me versus in my scenario, it's starting from ground up. Uh, so there was some challenges there. Uh, it wasn't easy, uh, but the the but to quit, I wouldn't quit in a million years. Uh, I believe that God had called me to do this. Uh, the yes, it's hard sometimes, uh, but I thank God when I see the saints of God, and it, they keep encouraging me. They keep they reminding me of what God called me to do, just to see the smile on their face just to see them growing. Uh, but uh, have we sacrificed a lot? Absolutely. Have my wife sacrificed a lot? Absolutely. Uh, for ministry? Absolutely. But the Lord has been there to, to provide. He to make sure we never miss anything. Uh, he makes sure that we're still uh, being the people he will have us to, to be. Uh, and this, so that it's really about making sure that we are following God. So quitting is not an option. It's to make sure, because it's not about me, but it's about the Lord. I'm reminded of one thing I heard Bishop Ed Long say, uh, because uh, I was listening to Bishop Ed Long before he died, and he was preaching a message. It just reminded me of who it's about. And he, he's, and he was giving his testimony, and it could have been at one of the holy convocations, and Bishop Ed Long said, you know, um, one Sunday I, I went out and preached, and, and I tell you, the church was on fire. Um, the service was awesome. Um, and I'll tell you, I walked back to my, as I started going back to my office, I just said to myself, oh boy, you hit a grand slam home run. And he said, the moment he got in his office and sat down, he said, the Holy Ghost convicted him and said, yes, but that's not what I told you to preach today. Hmm. You went out and did this on your own. Wow. But that's not what I told you to do today. That's not the message I told you to give today. And he said he was so convicted that, man, after all that, I, I did not follow what the Lord told me to do. Uh, so it's so important that we have ears, that we listen to the Lord, that we are allowing God to uh, be the one that lead us and guide us because that's what it's about. So quitting is not an option, but it's about means serving and obeying God. And sometimes some may not seem like they got the message, but just keep preaching anyway, keep teaching anyway, uh, because the Bible say one plant, one soil, but God will give the increase. So we just, it's not so much about uh, us as preachers, but it's about allowing God to do it. He knows what his sheep needs far better than I do. And he knows what every individual needs. So that we keep uh, doing what he told us to do, uh, regardless that we know we still win. Hmm. And that's a good point because you know, we have to just keep going in the in 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 times of adversity when yeah. we have things going on and, and, it, and it kind of forces us to be like, you know what, I want to quit, but we gotta keep going. Uh, I think yeah. that is testament to just being tenacious um in ministry. Uh I've talked to several pastors and most of them have, have varying answers. I, I find every answer interesting and, and very um different and unique because one pastor said yes. What pastor said every day, who will you use every day, 365 days. <laughs> Another pastor said, no, I never want to quit. And then yeah. it's like, it's, it's varies. And I love that. Yeah. Because I, I, one, think the, I think the sentiment is that uh, it's not easy. Yeah, yeah. And, exactly. and we know we can't really just quit because God called us to do it. Uh, so, but it's challenging. Mm -hmm. and, we, and that's the point that sometimes I think 
it's, it's that difficult, of it, it's challenging. Yeah. It's not easy. Uh, but you know quitting is not an option because God called you to do it. Exactly. And we got to be obedient to the Lord. Uh, and so the point is, my flesh might be wanting to give up, but I just know the right thing is I got to keep doing what God is challenging. It might be, I don't try not to allow my mind to go to, I want to quit. I want to quit. I don't want to be that type of person to say, you know, God, I want to quit. I, I don't want to complain. I just say, God, if you call me, do it to it. I know there's a reason why. Yeah. That means there's somebody in need, someone in need. I need to say something. I need to be doing something that somebody going to need this. Yeah. And if I look at it from that perspective, uh, he'll get the glory out of it. My flesh will probably want to throw it in the hand, but you can't <laughs> listen to the flesh. You just got to keep knowing what God has called you to do. So the, I guess the key thing is it's, not, it's a challenge every day, uh, at least most of the days uh, is a challenge. But for the most part, God always brings us through. Exactly. The, exactly. the victories are much more than all of the other challenges, I guess. Whenever we do get a victory, it just overwhelms it. Yeah, it does. It does. Because I know for me, uh, what keeps me going um, is, like you said earlier, one point that you said, when people encourage you to keep going, when your members encourage you to keep going, yeah. uh, whatever I have, someone, I remember um, earlier in, in, I would say, in ministry for me, um, whenever I would, you know, be ministering or getting in debates stupid arguments on facebook uh, or whatever uh, people and i would a couple people would just you know inbox me and say hey tj i love what you're talking about i agree with you on this stuff i'm praying for you whenever i received that type of uh, love it's like man you know maybe i am doing what god has called me to do yeah, um, yeah. and even recently i remember i had preached a message um and for um campus ministry back in january um and i was going through a tough time after that and um just recently, one of the college students reached out to me and said, hey, um, Elder McKnight, I just want to let you know that, you know, that message that you preached back in January is helping me even now in this season that sure. we're going through with, um, with, with, yeah. with COVID. And I'm like, wow, like, man, that is a blessing. I, I, yeah. I didn't even think you guys were still thinking about me. But yeah. you know, I think that, you know, it, it just goes to your point that, you know, we're doing this not for us to get the fame and glory, but for yeah. God to get the glory. Because we never know who would, ne who would need to hear you know, yeah. what God has to say in that season and how they yeah. will apply it even later yeah. on in life. Yeah. So. That, and that's the, all the more reason why, because God has you for a purpose. You don't know, we don't see the full puzzle. Mm -hmm. We don't see all the components. We just see our little piece that we're doing. And then we don't know how God would take that. And then someone may not get it right then, but later on down the road, I'd be saying, man, what you said a few months ago, man, that just blessed me. I was still thinking about that. And you don't move on, mm -hmm. and yet God is still ministering to someone uh, about something you said, and you don't even remember saying it sometimes. Yeah. Uh, but, but the Lord have, will, will take your, because your obedience and continue to bless individuals. And that's the reason why, you know, we just keep on going. We, we, keep, uh, we keep doing what we're doing because we know. One of the things I like to look at it like this, uh, Elderman Knight, is that I often like to ask, say, say to myself, God is dependent on me. Yeah. And he's dependent on me to uh for whenever I'm whenever I'm doing what he's called me to do to do that. And because he depends on me to that I will get the word out to whenever he tells me to speak the word, he's dependent on me uh to be a blessing to whomever I'm preaching that word to. So just know I believe that that even as ministers, missionaries, or every individual not titles, God still depends on sometimes to just share a word with someone, not be someone of a message, but our testimony. Yeah. Uh, and I believe the Lord is dependent on us as people of God to keep encouraging one another. That's why the Bible says iron sharpens iron, that we help one another uh, be, because he knows what we need. Yeah, he does. He definitely does. Yeah. Um, so the next question is, how can your why inspire someone else to find their why? And I'm, I'm going to kind of group those last two questions together. Okay. And how can someone find their purpose in God and in life? Very good. I, I try to make this kind of quick. I thought of that when you said it made me think about um, how can, how can my, your why inspire someone else? Uh, and then you said, how can someone else I can help someone else to find their why, mm -hmm. their purpose in life. Mm -hmm. um, one is that, you know, my first thing come to my mind is like, 
a college student. We go to college and we'll change our major sometimes two or three times. We're not sure right away. You know, you go to college might be for your major might be plan to be this, but when you get there, you may end up changing your major. Same thing as our why. Sometimes we think this is it. Um, and then we start working that field or start working it for a while. You figure out, well, eh, no, I don't really want to do that. That's not what I really want to do. I want to change to something else. Who knows us better than the Lord? He, who knows us better? There's nobody knows us better than God right. and knows where we're going at uh, even before we get there. So I think is uh, how can I, my wife inspire someone else? First of all, is that when we begin to seek God first, uh, to help us with some things we're passionate about and some things that we're believing for. Uh, but God knows us better. And if we seek him, I believe that the more we communicate with him, the more we're talking to him, uh, the more he began to speak to our heart. Uh, he'll let us know. I think he began to minister to us as well. What is our purpose in life? Some of us don't get it right away. Some may not know uh, what your purpose is. Uh, some will, but some won't know right away. But it doesn't mean God won't minister to us and tell us what that is and communicate that to us. Uh, I think it's part of us, our continued growth, our commun continued communication with him will help us to understand what our why is or what our purpose is. And and I believe whenever He, whenever God illuminate that in our spirit, we'll know without a shadow of a doubt, this is what I'm here for. This is my purpose here. I'm here to, for this purpose to help, to be a, whether it's a teacher, whether it's a bus driver, whatever the case may be, God can use you to minister to others, whatever field you're in. Um, and so I think one is that that passion that you have is that as, as you're committed my God, what do you want me to do? Even in where I'm at, wherever I'm at, just keep doing that and saying, God, what do you, I like to say that, that if uh, wherever you are, uh, God has you there for that purpose for that day. And that may for that week or that year or however long. And they may, there are souls, there are individuals there for you to witness to, you to share testimonies. Uh, and I believe in even in your greatest while, God, what is my purpose is, is something the Lord revealed to you, that passion you have, that burning desire as the Lord will put into your heart there. And I believe whenever that connects, you know, this is it. I know this is it. This is what I'm made for. This is what I'm here for. Uh, but I believe that that's anyone else. Uh, Samuel, uh, was, I think it was uh, Samuel, he didn't know God's voice right away. Right. Uh, but he, he, as a young person, just the same way as an adult, we won't know everything right away. Sometimes we want to. And we can have, sometimes people will say, yeah, you can be like this because your dad will like this. You can be like this because you grew up like this. And that can easily change. Uh, okay. But who knows us better than the Lord? Uh, and as we continue to communicate with him, I believe he will give us the why, our purpose, the reason why, and uh, even show us some of the reason why I've called you to this uh, so you can help others. Yeah, and that's perfect because I, I, a lot of pastors that I've asked that question to, they, they kind of centered on that, you know, the only way that you can find purpose is, is in the one who gives purpose, and that's yeah. God. You know, yeah. in order for us to find any kind of inspiration or anything in life, you know, it yeah. has to come from God. Yeah. So I love that. Yeah. And I'll be going to end on that because that's that's just perfect. I, I don't want to add nothing else to that. <laughs> that was good. Yeah. So do, uh, do you want to uh, add any other um, last words or anything before um, I ask you the last question? And we... I've enjoyed it, man. I'm telling you, it's been uh, tremendous. There's just so many great things that the Lord keep doing it. And I encourage, want to encourage anyone that perhaps see us uh, just to, to um, uh, just to keep striving, keep seeking, keep growing. You know, you may not have it right now, but just keep on pursuing, keep standing, keep fighting a good fight of faith. I will tell you, if you do, good things will happen. And we know God is able and we know he's, he's willing. So we just got to keep on holding up our end. But I enjoyed it, sir. Yeah, thank I enjoyed God it for too. You. I thank God for you, man. Yeah. You you have inspired me, and I'm just so honored to have you on the show. You know, I've always wanted to bring you on. Uh, when you asked me, when am I going to? Uh, <laughs> when are you going to bring me on? <laughs> you know, I had you invited. I, I just didn't know 
how yeah. to approach you with it. But I yeah. definitely, I am so excited that you, you know, you yeah. want to jump in, jump in and be a part. You know, I'm definitely going to um, bring you on again for some other um, conversations that I have in mind. Um, I want to do throw some panel discussions out there. Um, and I'll definitely keep you in the loop on those because I feel yeah. that your insight and wisdom will definitely be needed in those uh, conversations. So uh, be on the lookout. <laughs> so, um, where can, yeah, definitely. So where can people find you to connect with you and your ministry? They, you, well, I'm one of those ones that uh, uh, I should be more computer savvy, uh, <laughs> but uh, Breakthrough Ministry, you can always catch it on our Breakthrough Ministry website. Uh, break the ministry, uh, dot or, or BTN coaching dot or, mm -hmm. or you can always drop me an email at uh, pastor C Pickett at gmail dot com, or I'm also on LinkedIn. I'm not, I haven't used it as much, but I am on LinkedIn. That you can uh, catch me on LinkedIn as well. But um, but I thank God for again for. I did have a Twitter account, and I haven't used it that much, so I need to probably get it more active. And start using it <laughs> too, so. yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It definitely. Uh, and also, you can uh, catch us on Facebook Live. Well, uh, Breakthrough Ministry Church of God in Christ Facebook page. Yep. Um And his wife, she is she is more uh, technical, technologically savvy. Yeah, she's, she's always on Facebook. <laughs> uh -huh. and she, yeah. First Lady Pickett, uh, yeah. Patricia Pickett, um, yeah. and she goes live with uh, our services and everything. So um, definitely, if you want to connect with um, Breakthrough Ministries, Church of God in Christ, um, you can find us on the website, as he said, btmkojic.org, or um, you can find us on Facebook, uh, just type Breakthrough Ministries, Church of God in Christ, and also... Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, yeah, because we do we do our Facebook Live and we do Sunday school, mm -hmm. we do Bible studies, and we have our mm -hmm. Sunday lessons as well. So definitely mm -hmm. check us out. So we're we're doing God's work. Um, so I don't have anything else. I appreciate you taking the time to um, to speak with me. Uh, I'm excited. I can't wait to release this because I feel like it's going to bless a lot of people. <laughs> Thank you.